Welcome to the Watercolor Renaissance. Here we go. In this first video, I'm going to explain to you what the project is, what my idea is, and what the plan is um, to boost and propel watercolor, basically on a worldwide level, onto a much higher level playing field. This reason is basically to smash the market. We're going to create a giant market, a much bigger market, which means we've got outside players coming in, bringing in ideas, bringing in knowledge, bringing in experience, bringing in finances, bringing in all sorts of things which will basically boost the existing um, watercolor field onto a higher level, but particularly on one level, and that is on the, the level of recognition, the level of recognition and of value. Basically, we're living in a time where so many people have said this, have thought this, have heard it, where people say that they um, wish watercolor could be accepted on the same sort of level as oil painting. And every time someone says that to me, my, my simple question is, but why don't you do something about it? Because isn't that just the thing? I mean, who are we waiting for? Who on earth are we waiting for to tell us that we have the right to develop something with a structure that is so sound, so solid, and so interesting that we're going to drain the market in our direction? Stop waiting. Let's stop waiting. Let's get this done. Let's get this together and let's get it simple and put into, put into action. So the watercolor renaissance is, yes, it's a renaissance, but it's not just the renaissance after COVID. It's not the renaissance after lockdowns, which have basically demolished um, the creativity and the financial um, pocket of a lot of artists. It goes deeper. What there is and what I, fit, what I realized there was is that in oil painting, there is a very sound basis of history. This sound basis of history, which is worldwide, everybody knows of someone who's called Van Gogh, who's called Picasso, Michelangelo, William Turner. These are names that people know. Now, they are names that people know because we were taught about them at school. We have read about them in the newspaper. We've heard about them on the radio, on the television. There's documentaries. We've, we've heard about them in our school um, education, whether it be just in secondary school or in um, arts history lessons in universities and colleges and all the rest of it. There's books written on the art history on oil painting that goes through the wars, that goes through the history of the, the social, political, economical situation of the times and then reflects on what the artists were doing during those times as a reflection of the state of the public. Now, artists are very um, unique people. Uh, we are often uh, people that are seen to be um, with our heads in the clouds. We, we don't have our feet on the ground. We're, we, we're unable to do a lot of things, but I don't believe this is correct at all. My vision of an artist is actually a visionary. Uh, an artist is someone who has very, 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 very um, distinct values, who has beliefs in certain things, who looks uh, to, to, to take away the, the, the material, the, the superflu, so the, the, the things that we just don't need, and break things down to a unique and very simple beauty, and then try and... Um, uh, in a way express and, and put across that beauty so others can see that beauty um, from a different point of view uh, that perhaps they hadn't and that people those people are the public. So artists have always been a little bit different because they don't just um, accept what they're told. We, we're not trained um, in the same way that say a doctor, a nurse and, and school teachers are in the sense that we're given a four, five, six year um, uh, education which tells us how to behave artists basically have to go it alone and wing it and it's through their experience their observation and their understanding that they then start to vehicle things um, whether it be their actions but also their thought processes and therefore their creativity and this is what artists do all throughout history artists have been the people that have um, been watching They've been watching what's been going on in the world. They've been basically synthesizing it through their, their brain and through their sensitivity. And then they express what they feel about that situation in their art. And that's why artists have often been the, the, the ones that trigger or ignite movements throughout history. 
this is where artists, for me, this is one of the major um, role that artists do play. So where does watercolor renaissance um, come into it? Watercolor Renaissance comes back to history. It comes back not just to after COVID, it comes back to the history of art. It comes back to the history of watercolor that is missing all throughout our culture. Now, if we put um, together a very um, interesting, thought provoking, and um, I'd say inspirational um, history of actually what happened in the watercolor field throughout time, across cultures, across nations and continents, we're going to have something which is phenomenal because watercolor is the longest and the most, um, the oldest uh, painting technique there is, but it's also the one with the most amount of people. Now, watercolor goes across every single nature and, um, and culture, even the poorest who are the hardest hit because they can't kind of fit they can't afford to buy canvases and oil paintings so they worked mostly in watercolors so my proposition and my project basically which will become your project this is a, this is a team effort this is something that is free from me to you um, to to create a dynamic for us all um, but what i think we need to do is that we need to create a structure underneath the current watercolor system whereby we have um, so many um, watercolor artists today that are trying to exhibit in international watercolor exhibitions all over the world that pretty much all look the same they almost all have the same title it's the international watercolor society of this place or the water international watercolor masters of that place we have almost the same um, title and often it's the same artists that are being asked and they're showing pretty much the same paintings now this doesn't make sense because Egypt is not the same as France, which is not the same as America, which is not the same as China and not the same as Australia. So why, why are we repeating the same method with the same sort of um, image of watercolor in every single uh, country or every single city, regardless of their culture, regardless of their beliefs, regard regardless of the influence um, of all the different factors that create art. It doesn't make sense. Art is a creative process. It is an expression and it is not normal that the expression of the art of a particular time is exactly the same in Australia as it is in Iran or it is in Turkey. It doesn't make sense. We need to go away from the international level because there are too many artists who are trying um, to compete um, with the, the local market. And this doesn't work because every single exhibition is local. So if we're having all of these international people come in to a local area, but the local area is discovering the international artists but what happened to the local artists? What happened to the galleries that want to, um, to support and to show the work of the locals who represent the locals, their fears, their, their thoughts, their ideas, their concepts, their movements? Um, this is what we need to do. We need to go back to not only the, the local, but also to the individual. And to do this, I think we need to go back to a structure, a backbone, which is based in history. The watercolor renaissance is a renaissance not just after covid which we need but more profoundly it is the renaissance of watercolor throughout history it's telling the story of watercolor it's creating a dynamic and a movement that will give value that will create the and state the history of watercolor in the different areas of the world which will become a talking point the, the newspapers, um, whether it be blogs, whether it be social, social media or the radio, um, people will start to be interested in watercolour because, for example, maybe you have in, in Paris, I'll use Paris as an example, you have a rich history of art, you have a rich history of culture, you have a rich history of watercolour that nobody knows of. 
So what if we created an event in Paris? In this event, we go through, we dig up the history of watercolour in Paris. We dig up the, the artists. We find their works. We find where the originals are. We find um, productions that we can use, photos that we can use. And we tell the story of how watercolour developed and how it influenced life in Paris at the time with all the social things that were going on. Now, this is so important because this history and this um, curiosity to understand the, the local on a local plane will drain people from other areas of France to learn what was happening in Paris. But if the exhibition in Paris is the same as the south of, of France, why on earth would people travel to see it? Because they've got the same show, basically, pretty much a... Um, uh, a cut and paste show right next to them so this needs to change we need to create a bigger market to create a bigger market you need to stimulate the public you need to go into the public you need to talk you need to show them what's done what was done you need to go into the history you need to go into the architecture you need to go into all the the factors what were watercolors what were watercolors like at the time what was their paper like at the time who were the artists who were the sponsors what was driving them what was influencing them what has changed from then till now and this is essential and if we do this but we create um, the ideal and the appropriate event in different areas of the world so turkey looks like turkey the the international artists yeah sure they can be there but what about the national artists what about them turkey their show should not look like the paris show create differences these differences will create a richer more inspiring and greater market but on top of it they it will inspire the artists to do more to evolve and to, to become more dynamic. And this is where the snowball or the domino effect will occur. My advice to you now with this first video is go out, go out. Go out and paint, go out and draw, go out. Stop sitting in the studio. The studio was sort of um, a great place to go to, to raise our technicity, to, to get our level of paintings up higher, but we've already done that. Um, that's already there. The world has already seen there's great technique in watercolor. Today, that's not the issue that needs attention. For some people, sure, it still may need attention and you can work um, on that parallel to what I'm about to explain. An artist learns everything from outside. An artist is like a sponge. Um, we hear things, we see things, um, we feel things. And this is what goes into our brain, it goes into our being. And then we sort of have this um, understanding of, of the energy or the essence behind a subject. And that's what we try to portray through our paintings. It's an expression that we often try to portray. It's not necessarily just the, the shape. There's something more that we're trying to tell through our work. Now, to do this, we have to go out, we have to speak to people, we have to connect with people, we have to understand what's going on, smell the smells, listen to the sounds, be absorbed in the environment that we're in. But even more than that, if we are going to bring watercolour back on a local level, in lots of different places, on a higher level, because every single exhibition is local, whether it has an international title on it, it will always be the locals that come. What you need to do is you need to get the locals um, interested. Now, how many people have exhibitions, um, try and give workshops and courses, yet no one around them knows that they even paint. This is what happens so often. You're, you're, you're an artist, you've got this career, you've got 
um, 5,000 friends on Facebook, you've got 200 likes on every painting, yet your next door neighbor doesn't even know you paint. Now, this doesn't work. So go out, um, draw, paint. Um, people will come up to you and people will talk to you. They'll say, oh, you paint, I paint as well. Oh, I used to like drawing, or my uncle paints, or my mother's an artist, or I have a gallery. Do you want to come and have a look at my gallery? Or maybe it will be the 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 um, the the mayor of the, the town um, who says, you know what, I have a, a gallery. We're looking for events. Maybe you could make a, an event for, for the summer holidays or something. Or maybe you'll meet other artists that will say, you know, wow, let's talk. Let's go have coffee. Let's talk about, like, what we can do to make things happen in the area. And this is what going out and painting outside does or drawing outside because what you're doing is you're beginning to become visible. You have to start to become visible if you want people to come to your events, if you want to be able to have that exchange with people and create a bigger market and be able to invest your time and your energy into something which is progressing, you need people to know you're there. So to do that, Go out, start drawing, start painting, and people will come to you. You don't even need to go to them. If you're not confident, ask one of your friends to come along, maybe in a group of five or, or, or however many. Just go out and draw and paint, and people will come to you, and you will see the dynamic will start to happen on its own. So the idea is to go back to the local, but it's also to create um, a stronger community around each individual. Now that's something that you have to do and that's something that you're going to have to develop but you will see that it's very easy to do because people will just be so happy to see you. And honestly, after this period of, of the confinements with COVID where people are feeling stuck, they're feeling paralysed, go out and talk to people. That's the thing that people need the most. Go out and talk. Go out and sit in the sun. Go out and draw. Go out and inspire. There is nothing greater than art than to inspire others. You are the inspirational ones of today. You need to go and take that role on and say, hey, what, you know what? It's a hard time. Everyone's having a hard time, but we can get through this. But we're not just going to get through it. We're going to explode it. We are going to take our life, we're going to take control of our situation, we're going to can take control of our art, and we're going to make things happen. We're going to take things to the next level, we're going to make something stronger and greater than it was before, and that's all it takes. It just takes us to decide to do it, that's all it takes. So the plan is there, the plan has started, uh, the ball is already in motion, you are now uh, partially involved into the project. I'm going to explain a little bit well, how I'm going to be doing things to you so you, you, you're you following um, as I go along. But thank you for being here because I need you to do this and this project will support everybody. It's something that we all need and it is the community spirit. It is the people together. It is the positive energy um, that will basically spring out of this, which is just going to have such a massive um, positive effect on towns, on people, on families, on, on everybody. And that's exactly what we need. So welcome to the Watercolor Renaissance. And I can say, let's make this happen. I speak to you soon.